I'm excited to share an interview I did recently with Josh Siegel of the show group. This is a restaurant and an entertainment company that is using NFTs as part of its business model. And I think this is really something that could be coming more and more in restaurants where we may see NFTs as something in the reservation systems. We may see it as a benefit. We may see it as a funding mechanism. So you kind of join the club and maybe you get early access to reservations or, or private dining or something like that. There's simply a lot of optionality that restaurants and entertainment companies have in the NFT space. And Show Group is one of the first companies to really implement this with their three tiered NFTs. And I think it's a really interesting concept. So I wanted to talk to Josh about not only what this business is, but how they're using NFTs in the business model and what he sees as the future of NFTs in entertainment and restaurants. It was a really informative discussion, and I think you're really going to enjoy what he has to say. If you're in the San Francisco Bay Area, check out their restaurant. This is definitely a project I'm going to be watching to see if they're successful, because I think this is the kind of model that really could be replicated around the country and help restaurants be a little bit more profitable and operate a little bit more efficiently long term, which would frankly be really good for everybody. So now on to the interview. Here is Josh Siegel. All right. Well, I am excited today to have Josh Siegel from the show group on to talk about his new restaurant, uh, club, NFT project. Josh, thanks for joining me. Thanks for having me, Travis. Appreciate it. So first of all, I want to get a little bit of background on what the show group is and kind of your background, because I was digging into, it seems like you've spent a lot of time in not only restaurants, but restaurant technology. So it seems like an interesting tie to what you're building with the show group in, in San Francisco specifically. Show group is a experiential hospitality platform that focuses on developing experiences and building communities specifically around the entire hospitality arena, starting with uh, retail, then you have events and dining and restaurant experiences. So, you know, unlike other hospitality groups who focus primarily on perhaps one channel, you know, we really see ourselves as a platform thinking about the entire food and hospitality experience from you know, all different perspectives, really a multi-channel or omni-channel approach, uh, you know, to hospitality. And where does that start? Because I think you are doing construction now on your first space. So tell yes. me a little bit about that. Where, where, I mean, for us, it, it's really um, a multi-pronged approach. You know, we, we have taken quite an ambitious approach in that we're building out a, a fine dining and hospitality club experience on top of Salesforce Park, which is really an iconic location. Uh, in parallel, there's going to be a space actually at the on the first level of this very large transit center. Um, so, you know, Salesforce Park sits on top of the transit center. The transit center itself stretches about five city blocks and approximately mm -hmm. in the center of the transit center on the bottom floor, first level has kind of been earmarked for, you know, re a, a lot of different retail and restaurant concepts. And so we'll have a location on the first floor that will be a Japanese market and grab and go concept, very similar to the food that we're offering. Um, well, I wouldn't say similar to the food necessarily, similar, very similar to the quality of food we're offering in the fine dining location but done so in more of a fast casual bento box and, and Japanese, you know, food retail experience. And then last but not least, our events business is something that we're also actively spinning up. And that's really focused on essentially bringing show experiences, you know, to other locations. Um, given our, given the fact that we're in, you know, incredibly central downtown San Francisco, surrounded by, uh, incredible companies from tech to biotech to finance, um, everything in between. We're th we, we think we're thinking a lot about serving the needs of you know our 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 business neighbors, serving the needs of personal lifetime type experiences, weddings, bar mitzvahs, things of that nature. Um, and you know that area is very relevant, particularly now given the fact that 
many of the businesses in the downtown San Francisco market, you know, who have been um, moving more towards remote work. A lot of them had had culinary programs where they were offering their employees, you know, lunch or dinner, even five days a week. And now they've, you know, um, in many cases, they've stopped doing that. So we see a big opportunity to kind of serve those needs as well in terms of like private events, private dining, uh, group events where employees are being encouraged to kind of get out of their house and come together uh, to mingle and to meet and to develop culture. We want to be able to, you know, influence and, and be a part of those experiences as well, even if it's not within the four walls of one of our venues. So there is a m marketplace uh, on the first floor, uh, Bento Box, uh, kind of a, a fast casual, if you will. There's a restaurant as well, and in, in that will will that kind of tie in, or is that the same location as the event space? Um, and yeah, and the, will that the restaurants on top of Salesforce Park, and the restaurants really okay. are flagship location. So you know, most of the collateral and the things that you see us talking about has really been focused around show, which is our flagship fine dining location. That's also going to include Show Club, which is a hospitality private members club. Um, and, and that, you know, is certainly, um, you know, as we call it, the, the flagship location and, and uh, very much central, you know, to our overall strategy and, and, and what we're doing right now. So most of our time has been spent uh, on that project, just given, you know, how, how, how large it is and, and how ambitious it is in terms of both the scale of construction, the size of the space, the location of it being on top of a park, which makes it really unique, but also very challenging to, you know, yeah, I'm to, sure the construction is, is to not construct. Easy. We're still trying to figure out, you know, like how to crane material up onto the, up onto the roof of this thing, you know, little things like that that you don't really think about. Um, and it's why, you know, we've been in engineering and design for almost three years now. So, you know, we, we mm -hmm. had a little bit of a hiatus with, COVID, um, many hospitality companies did too. COVID for us was an opportunity to kind of take a step back and say, does this make sense? And the conclusion we came to was not only does it make sense, we're going to double down. You know, we're going to, we're going to, we recognize that, you know, that the city of San Francisco in particular, but even I would say hospitality at large, because we're really a global focused company. We're thinking about other experiences and we're in discussions to open up other locations around the world. So, you know, we've, we were thinking quite a bit about how to take advantage of, you know, this very difficult time for the hospitality industry. And we decided let's broaden our thinking here. Let's not just focus on fine dining, but let's come up with a retail solution that can offer the same quality foods, but in a fast, casual, lower price point environment. How do we take what we're doing and the, and the love and passion that we have for creating these types of experiences and communities and build an event capability so that we can kind of take, you know, our concept and our food and, and passion for hospitality to other places as well. Um, and that's really where the NFT membership component came from was a thinking about community and the creation of wanting to capitalize and take advantage of this incredible location, you know, on top of this park, this iconic building that we are now uh, about to begin constructing. The base building is there, but we're, we're adding a second level. We're putting a roof on it. You know, it's a, it's not just a build out. It's, it's massive surgery. It's, it's an infrastructure project. Um, no. And so, you know, when you put so much of so much time and energy into kind of realizing that type of vision, you want to be able to share it with a, a community that is special and and want to be able to serve that community um, in a way that, frankly, you really can't do at scale. And that's the reason why, you know, we only have 3,275 members. Um, these memberships are a lifetime membership. So it's a it's a one time purchase. And it's also our way of of recognizing that, hey, if these if these individuals um, are going to be a part of our community and help us establish this flagship location and really put uh, the flag in the ground for show group, we want to be in a position to be able to give back and recognize them, you know, for, for the lifetime of, of, of their membership. 
Um, so that was really the, you know, I, I would say the the catalyst of of why we actually decided to take what is a restaurant that will be open to the public and add a private hospitality membership component. So if I can kind of take everything that you just said and try to base it in, in things that people might be a little bit more familiar with. So it seems like you're trying to take, Hey, this is a, this is a restaurant concept that I, I can eat at regularly. So I can, I can develop a relationship with, with this restaurant. Um, I can also be part of the club. So you have a little bit like a kind of a country club member, you know, aspect to it. So maybe this is a place that we go on a regular basis for events. Maybe it's where I, my, my kids host their weddings. Um, and then also it, it seems like your grander vision is that would be the local kind of San Francisco angle. But then as you expand, you go, okay, now I'm a, I'm a member of show group. I have a, a earth NFT. We can, we can talk about the, the specific NFTs. Now I go to Las Vegas and I can go to the event center there and, you know, host my Salesforce uh, party or, or something like that. Same thing in New York. It, would that kind of be the long-term vision is that um, you're going to create this community that starts in San Francisco, but then ultimately can kind of span the world in this high-end restaurant event space? You got it. The current membership offering that we have is, uh, as I said, 3,275 members those those memberships which are <clears throat> backed by will be backed by an nft those are what we call global uh lifetime memberships and they're founding members so what that essentially means is you're grandfathered in to any future show clubs that we open throughout the world and it's those 3275 memberships that will that will be the only ones that will provide you global access, meaning you can go to any show club that we open, as opposed to a local membership, um, which some, certain people may just have a need and you know to want to join their local show club at some point. Um, that membership, you know, theoretically is really geared towards that particular location, but the founding members, you know, level that we're all that we're initially offering will give you that. Uh, that global access. And in terms of, you know, the, the bigger picture, you, you know, you, you nailed it. I think, um, you know, first and foremost, we're a hospitality, fine dining, you know, restaurant experience um, that in addition to that has a membership component, a private membership component, which offers you, of course, things like priority reservations, you know, access to a dedicated concierge, different tiers have other benefits as well. But there's also going to be quite a bit of programming and other events, you know, that will happen in parallel with the restaurant. So you'll have quite a few very valuable benefits as a patron of the restaurant and as a member of show club um, that will give you a certain level of access and a certain level of services that you wouldn't otherwise have if you were simply just coming in from, you know, out, out, outside a public person coming in to dine at the restaurant. Um, but in addition to that, there's also, you know, we have a, a lot of plans for other types of programming um, and events as well that, you know, some of which will take place inside the restaurant and inside the four walls of our of our venue and other other events that will you know happen outside the restaurant. So I want to go through a couple of so you have three tiers of the NFT. Um, the Earth NFT is seventy five hundred dollars. There are two thousand eight hundred seventy four of those. Water is 15,000, there are 377, and then there's fire, which is uh, $300,000, and there's 20 of those. I wanna kind of put that one to the side for a second because it sounds like there's a lot more going on with, with the fire one specifically. But, um, but I just wanted to ask about some of these benefits because on your, on your site, you, you talked about the concierge, uh, you can have a house account. If you're on the water level, you can have a private car service, but there's priority reservations, um, access to all future show club lounges. Um, it seems it sounds like there's education uh, experiences as well, which I mean, that, that'd be pretty cool for me. Um, uh, and so it, talk a little bit about what the what kind of the, the steps up, step ups um, are there with that, because I think this is an interesting concept in that, you know, if you have an NFT, 
that is a lifetime value that can actually be transferred to, you know, if let's say that you're a, a venture fund in, in San Francisco, maybe this is a great option for you to be able to host um, founders or investors or something like that. Um, but you, you know, don't have use for it after five years or something like that. And then someone else can buy it and, and come in. So, so what are kind of those, those tiers and, um, and how are you thinking about that? And then if you want to touch on fire as well, that'd be, that'd be yeah, interesting. Sure. And touching on, you know, what you had just said, um, I think that's the key piece, you know, that's, that's an important delineation for us to share, you know, with your listeners is that first and foremost, this is a, this is a one-time purchase, right? So mm -hmm. unlike other membership clubs, whether it be, you know, clubs that we covet and, and actually enjoy like the Soho house or in the in San Francisco, the battery, those are, you know, annual membership based programs with annual dues. Um, oftentimes, you know, three to $5,000 a year. Show Club starts at our um, foundation level, which is our Earth membership at $7,500 one time. So mm -hmm. there's no annual dues. There's no reoccurring fees or payments. You, you pay once um, and you're a lifetime membership, membership holder. The other big difference is that, as you touched on, you can then sell that membership. Um, Hope, at, at the very least, hopefully for what you paid. And our goal is to certainly increase that value over time. Unlike other, you know, kind of standard memberships, uh, it's a use it or lose it. You know, you pay that annual fee. And if you go once or you go 20 times a year, um, it, it, it's what you make of it. But it's also, you know, kind of loss in terms of the, the dollar value at, at the end of that year. You can't well, recover it. A, a symbiotic relationship too. I just, sorry to cut you off, off, but I think this is what's interesting with NFTs in this kind of asset class is the holders then have an incentive to make this the coolest restaurant around and event center around and, and show group does as well to create value for holders. So it, it is sort of this symbiotic yeah, you relationship. Got it. I mean, we're, there's a level of accountability there certainly. And there is a lot of, you know, reciprocity in that, you know, we're thinking very much about, how every day we can add value. Not only do we want to ensure that what what someone is paying for that lifetime membership, are they getting that, you know, they're getting that value. For us, we often talk about 10Xing the value. So if you're gonna pay $7,500 mm -hmm. for a membership, we want you to feel over those 10 years that you received $75,000 in, in value. Um, so there's that component, which is, you know, a level of accountability that we have to continue to execute and deliver on creating great experiences and great value for our, our members because we want those memberships to obviously retain their value. Um, and then there's the other piece of it too, which is the members have a, a, a level of interest or a, there's there's an incentive for the members to also engage in the community and to also help us and provide feedback um, and to do their part in terms of ensuring that the community is strong and that you know the show, show club membership um, continues to provide, you know, value over, over the long term. So, yeah, I think that, I think that is a very unique facet of, you know, what we're offering and, and what, and, and a membership that's based in an NFT, you know, can, can do. Um, in terms of getting into your next question around, you know, earth memberships and, and the foundation level, and then kind of the delineation between the next tier, which is our water membership. The real difference between those two m memberships is really in, uh, Water members, which is a fifteen thousand dollar lifetime membership, receive valet parking, complimentary valet parking, and we know, you know, in the city of San Francisco, like that's a pretty good value. If you think of a water membership <laughs> yeah. over ten years, breaking down to around one hundred and thirty dollars a month, if you come to the restaurant twice, you're essentially that's pretty much your valet parking covered, you know, or your parking is covered. Yeah. Um, so that's a big a benefit for for that tier. The other component is a, a car service, a complimentary car service. So within a certain radius, we'll pick you up and, and bring you um, to the restaurant um, via a, a show car. And then the last piece, which I think is really the, the biggest component of the water tier membership is our monthly members omakasa dinners. And those dinners will be programmed and curated where we'll be bringing in uh, on a monthly basis different types of celebrities, various speakers, um, really engaging and interesting content 
that we'll be delivering and sharing on a monthly basis, you know, for those members. So for people who really value, you know, the educational element, people who want to be networking and meeting on a frequent basis with other members and doing various kinds of, you know, mind melds and opportunities to learn, um, you know, all different things and be exposed to various elements of Japanese culture, but not just Japanese culture, other, you know, types of content as well. That's really where um, the water membership, I think, uh, comes into play. And, and then, as you mentioned, our fire membership tier is really an investment membership level. So it's those, those members are essentially receiving um, a security in, in, the, in their, their, their membership is securitized. And they will also receive um, profit sharing, you know, over the period uh, of, in which they're a member. So, you know, it's a unique. I assume that's offering. a little bit more complicated than just buying an NFT. Is is that correct? Yeah, but for, for sure. I mean, you know, we're we're definitely on the cutting edge of that element. You know, we're working with uh, one of our attorneys is you know former uh, head of risk and compliance for the SEC. There's a lot of security regulations that you know I think right. are relevant in the NFT space that we have to be begin to think about that. I think many projects haven't necessarily thought about or mm -hmm. or been you know as cognizant um, as, as we probably need to be. But yeah, for us, we're very much approaching this in 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 a way that we think over time um, is going to be you know certainly a protect and, and kind of de risk for for our members. So yeah, the complexity there is it's it's an NFT, but it's actually behind the scenes got the wiring. Uh, and the legalese of a security, all which can be delivered via, you know, a smart contract, which is actually pretty cool. And mm -hmm. those members, as I mentioned, will, you know, will, will receive um, some profit sharing benefits. So that's a different class of memberships. It's obviously only for 20 people. There's been a little bit of confusion that, you know, Show Club is a $300,000 hospitality right. membership experience. Not, not the case at all. You know, the majority of our memberships will be a $7,500 lifetime membership that's the core focus um but we wanted to create a tier of of opportunity for certain people who want to come in and invest in what we're doing um and help you know create what we're calling the fire board which which will s essentially be a steering committee for show club so the nft itself uh what blockchain is it on how how is it launching uh what what kind of details can you share you have the pricing information um so i assume there's going to be a way to buy that with dollars rather than ethereum or solana or something like that but um how do, how does that work yeah the, the 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 nft that we're going to be offering for show club is on the ethereum blockchain um okay. you know much like most nfts today um We've taken a, a, you know, what I would call a hybrid approach in that, in recognizing, you know, that the market is has has been has had its challenges. There's a lot of individuals who are apprehensive about parting ways with their Ethereum right now, whether it be the imminent, you know, split coming up and you know ETH two two point oh, or just given you know current market dynamics, we wanted to offer a way for people to first and foremost, gain the value of an NFT, which fundamentally we really believe in the long-term benefits. And that's why we're leveraging the technology to essentially represent ownership of the show, show club lifetime membership. Um, so what we did was we said, listen, we want to be able to enable people to use USD and cash and, or credit card to purchase their NFT or their, their membership. So we're going to create an opportunity for and anyone who wants to, to purchase via good old dollar to, to do so. Mm -hmm. And if you want to be a part of the mint and, and use ETH as your way of purchasing, which would be more typical to, you know, the NFT world, then initially you'll create a reservation very much to, you know, similar to pre-mint process where, you know, you provide your wallet uh, address, we verify funds, you get added to our pre-mint list. And then at a later time, you know, likely probably some point in October, we'll move to mint. And so anyone who creates a reservation right now is essentially to contract to purchase. Um, and then once we mint, those individuals who purchase with credit cards will be minting those NFTs to our custodial wallet and we'll transfer them 
to uh, those individuals when they provide their wallet address in, inside of their show club profile. And anyone who opts in to actually be a part of the minting process will then, you know, mint their NFT on the on the date of the, the actual mint. Gotcha. And then after that point, it you could potentially sell it on, on OpenSea or something like that, I, I you presume. It. And it's, you know, it's, it's we, we try to keep things as simple as possible. You know, for us, you want to be able to bring people into this you know, world of kind of web two, two dot five, like two and a half, you know, where, <laughs> where we're bridging the gap between web two and web three. Um, a lot of people still find, you know, purchasing NFTs, I think, complicated to a certain extent. And I, and I think there's a, a lot of technology that's out there and in, in, in flight right now, that's going to make that more seamless. And, and then you have, of course, kind of the whole token gating component. Um, but for us, it was very much more so focused on, you know, we've got, a great utility benefit and offering that we want to offer to anyone, you know, who kind of uh, is a, is appropriate and, and and meets the criteria for for a membership, which essentially is anyone who just doesn't have, you know, ill ill intent. Um, so, you know, how do we do that in a way where we can kind of bridge that gap and make it available to to everybody? So it, it sounds a little bit more you know, complicated than, you know, anyone perhaps would like. But I think, you know, in terms of the way that we've structured it and, and designed it, you, you touched on my technology background. You know, that's really where um, I've been coming in and people that uh, are part of our team have been really focusing on is, you know, how do we make this and, and kind of do this in a way that um, is seamless, but also doesn't necessarily create this requirement where you have to purchase with ETH and you have to be a part of the the minting process. Yeah. And I wouldn't be surprised if we go this direction in the future um, a, a lot more. I did want to ask on, on on that point, I wanted to ask about the NFT from a business model perspective, because one of the things that I've, I think is potentially really interesting in NFTs is how this upfront payment that, that promises some sort of, you know, benefit long-term um, whether it's, you know, a profit sharing or membership to a club, which you could, I mean, you could think of a board API club really as just, you're spending $150,000 to like be part of the club. Um, but I think that, you know, in 10 years, we're going to look at this as, as a piece of the business model and restaurants is a really interesting space. Do you think about the NFT as sort of a, a way to fund the business model and it it sort of fits in the whole you know your whole pricing structure and, and all that stuff when you kind of model it out before the business starts um or or was this just kind of hey this really fits what we're doing how do how do you think about that and how does that how does the nft itself fit in the the business model it's a great question i think for, you know first and foremost and you know you you know being as familiar you are with the space can appreciate the fact that there's a lot of misinformation around the entire nft world today you know and i think that there's been a fair amount of kind of negative overhead um because of a few you know bad actors or or uh for people who have been focusing more on you know these opportunistic projects and cash grabs yeah. and things of that nature and not really putting the emphasis where it needs to be which is the underlying technology and like what is the true value of an nft whether you're an artist developing artwork who now has an opportunity to create a reoccurring revenue stream around that artwork through its lifetime as it exchanges hands, or if you're a company like us in hospitality, thinking about a membership program and a way of showing not only um, you know public verifiability of ownership, um, <coughs> the value is truly you know in the technology. And so when we took a, a, a stand back from a business perspective, first and foremost, it was important for us because hospitality in general is hard. And restaurant mm -hmm. business in particular is is hard. How do we de <laughs> develop a concept that can be supported without a membership component? So first and foremost was like let's make sure that box is checked, and and we did that through the way that we've you know designed the space and and through kind of the overall I would say economics of of the model that we've been developing. Um, the restaurant can support itself without a membership component. So first and foremost, we're not relying on show club as a means of an ongoing, you know, revenue stream to ensure that, you know, we're profitable. 
um, it certainly can be potentially additive, but it's not our, our, our focus. So then the second piece was why a membership? Is there a, a business driver here or is there other value that you know we are focusing on? And for us, it really was the other value. It was a recognition that communities during COVID, it was, it was the patrons who were you know, frequent guests of restaurants that during COVID started ordering takeout and supporting, yeah. you know, high end restaurants that otherwise would have struggled. So seeing the importance of community, seeing the importance of kind of your frequent guests and the people who came out to support those hospitality locations during COVID really kind of opened our eyes up to the value and not to say that that was lost on us prior, but it just was certainly much more present for us to recognize that, hey, we really want to foster that community proactively. We want to build a community that we can serve and, and create these great experiences for um, and build those relationships and make it special. Like So when you come into show and you, you're a part of show club, you truly feel like a part of being an extended family. And as as you know, cliche or as as corny as that may sound like that's truly you know how we approach this is that we really want to develop that level of relationship with our with our guests. The business component, of course, is, yes, we do receive a percentage. We receive 10 percent of the resale you know, value of a membership when it's resold. Mm -hmm. um, those funds will be earmarked simply to go back into supporting the membership program. And even in a year in which people are so thrilled with their show club memberships that they decide that they're going to hold on to them and, and not resell them, we've earmarked a certain amount of, of, of our, you know, kind of profits to reinvest into the membership club. So, you know, basically how it all kind of shakes out is that we haven't really, we're not relying on the proceeds, the ongoing proceeds in terms of the resale, you know, revenue to support show club. Um, the initial proceeds from membership sales will certainly go in terms of offsetting construction costs, which um, given kind of, you know, the iconic nature of, of the project and the size of the investment in which we're making into the physical space, particularly given the fact that it's really truly like an infrastructure project where we're, you know, yeah. we're adding walls, we're putting a roof, we're adding staircases, cutting steel, concrete. It's, it's a massive, massive undertaking. That will certainly help. Um, it's not the only source of capital we have. We, we're very fortunate to have other sources of capital. Um, but in terms of kind of the ongoing thinking, it's it's really not fueled by a profitability equation or something that we're thinking about. How can we leverage this to make money? It's very much more focused on how can we leverage this to build a community and to even give back to those people who help us early on and in, in kind of our, uh, our 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 creation. Um, so you know, long term, there's probably other ways in which we can leverage NFTs to generate money and, and profitability. But for show club, it's really not about that. Gotcha. That makes sense. Um, so it's a piece of the business model, but not not necessarily like the core. I, I did want to kind of pick your brain about what you think the future of NFTs is. Because one of the things I think could be really interesting in the restaurant space is being able to match um, your your cost structure with your revenue structure. One of the, I mean, I, mean, I uh, have been involved in uh owning a restaurant in the past. And one of the challenges is always, okay, how many people do I have come in on Thursday night when I may have 10 customers and I may have a hundred? Um, so your, your, your costs and your demand is not necessarily lined up. Um, do you think that we will, and maybe you will lead this, move to a place where like reservations are NFTs? And so then you can say, well, I know that I have sold X number of, of table seats for today. So therefore I can, I can buy food and staff the restaurant and, and all this stuff um, to run profitably rather than sort of guessing and going, I, I hope we're staffed correctly today based on some historical information that I might have. Um, but we're, but we're kind of, you know, still flying blind. I, I, I think that's one thing that a lot of people don't appreciate in the restaurant space is that, it's it's a really variable business, and if you don't have enough customers on any given day, you lose a lot of money really quickly. And do you think there is a space for that for for something like NFTs to um, 
provide stability to restaurants or am I kind of going too far with that? No, I do. I, I, I do think so. I mean, there's other components, obviously, to address some of the, you know, the business elements that, that you're mentioning in terms of, you know, getting seats filled and, you know, and, and, and much of that variability and a lot of that, um, you know, just the, the, the nature of kind of not being able to necessarily forecast that or, or know what to expect. You know, we, we often, you know, in the, in our world of hospitality, you try to, from the very beginning, design a restaurant with that you feel you can obviously, you know, keep full. Right. But I think that's, that's everybody's goal, but often, you know, difficult to achieve. How do you do that? You do that through, you know, building an incredible reputation through incredible food, incredible service and an incredible experience. But even then, um, yeah, there's, there's challenges, you know, that can come your way. And so I think NFTs certainly can, you know, help kind of stabilize that element of of uncertainty for, you know, restaurant owners and, and the hospitality space. For for us, we've thought quite a bit about, um, you know, res- reservations today in many restaurants are highly coveted, hard to get um, mm-hmm. in, in many cases. And there are there are a couple of companies that are actually now thinking about, you know, how do we offer an NFT that kind of gives you access what what if in a world in which you 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 worked very hard to get a reservation or waited months to get a reservation and then something came up and now you just have to simply call right. and cancel um maybe you know there's a time and place where you could actually sell that reservation as an nft you know and transfer it um and create an incremental revenue stream for the restaurant itself so i think you know when you look at the world of ticketing today concerts like this is it's a great mm-hmm. example of where NFTs are already starting to show their value and will continue to do so, um, where you know you do have a lot of issues in secondary markets and on on, on people scalping tickets and reselling them, and so you know, I think people in the ticketing and concert space, similar to the world of restaurants, need to be thinking about right now, not so much how do you crack down on that, but how do you how do you get involved in it to the point where you're able to monetize kind of those phenomenons or, you know, tap into those uh, types of, of, of kind of normal behaviors that people tend to, to take part in and proactively be a part of it. So, you know, if, if, if there's an exchange for reservations or if there's a place in which someone can go and sell a reservation someday, certainly I as an entrepreneur and I as a hospitality and business owner, rather than me kind of turning a blind eye to that, you know, my thinking much more is, well, how can I be a part of that? How can I facilitate that and do that more in a way that is above board, that makes a sense and that creates value, not only for our company, but also for, for our guests. So, you know, I often tell people not, not too long in the distant future, we're going to not be talking about an NFT concert ticket or an NFT plane ticket you know, or an NFT membership. Like we, we're, we're kind of sensitive to the fact that we actually look forward to a day in which we're not talking necessarily about an NFT membership component. We're simply a hospitality membership club that is using this technology you know, to facilitate these really interesting things that otherwise wouldn't be possible. And I think you know, we'll continue to see that momentum in other industries as well. Like I said, ticketing, plane tickets, you know, you're not gonna talk about your Delta NFT ticket but, right. but likely, you know, someday that plane ticket will be an NFT based ticket in that it will be verifiable. It will be written on the blockchain. It will have other elements and components to it that just makes sense, like just technologically makes sense. And I think that's where the world is going. And we need to be thinking a lot about how to leverage that technology, not for the not for the sake of you know benefiting our pockets or our wallets, but really how do you improve the overall guest experience, you know, for our customers. Um, and that's really where our, our heads are at. And that even, I think, kind of transcends to uh, the metaverse, you know, and, and that whole entire world, which is very much top of mind for us, not a core focus, but something that we're also thinking about um, as well. Yeah, use the technology to your advantage. And as I heard somebody once say, uh, crypto and NFTs will be mainstream when you don't know that you're using them. And I, I think that's Ultimately, we're, 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 we're getting there, but we're maybe five years from uh, companies figuring out how to make this completely invisible to us. No doubt. Um, anything else uh, that I missed uh, before I let you go? I, I really appreciate the time. No, thank you. Um, 
I think, you know, I think, I think you really covered it. Of course, you know, anyone interested, please, you know, come to our website. It's showclub.com or showgroup.com, which is our hospitality company. Our, our memberships, as I've said, are a lifetime membership. We're really focusing on, you know, creating a great community and creating great value for our members. And, you know, we're really thinking a, a lot about not just the city of San Francisco and the impact we can make there, but uh, our true focus is really at a global level. So you may not live in San Francisco today, but it, I think it'd be uh, a great time to, you know, to, to at least investigate and, and, and consider uh, getting involved in show club and, um, you know, hopefully getting involved on, on, on the early stages as we, as we grow and, and expand. I, I love to see the innovation in the space uh, and with restaurants and NFTs. I think there's a lot more there than people realize um, it's early but I'm excited to see where, where you guys take it. Thank you for the time, Josh, and uh, we'll be following the uh, show group going forward. Thanks, Travis. I appreciate it. Take care.